Hello and welcome to another Minute with Matt. I'm Matt with New Life Church and continuing my series of short Bible studies based on the book of Matthew. Today we're uh, continuing chap Matthew chapter uh, 26 and we'll be beginning with verse 31. This is right after the uh, Last Supper and went to the Mount of Olives. And Jesus said to them, his, his apostles, All of you will be made to stumble because of me this night. For it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. So the question I keep on pointing out over and over again, because Jesus did too. He knew he was going to be crucified. He did not have to be. He did not have to be. He didn't have to let it happen, but he did it for a reason. He did it because that's what had to happen, so that my sins could be forgiven, so that your sins could be forgiven. It wasn't an accident. It was exactly as needed to happen. All of you will be made to stumble because of me this night, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. But after I have been raised, I will go before you to Galilee. So, he knew he was going to rise from the dead too. But Peter had something to say. Peter was always the first one to talk. Sometimes he had something great to say. Sometimes not so great. Peter answered and said to him, Even if all are made to stumble because of you, I will never be made to stumble. You know, and uh, we can insult him for that, but isn't that how you feel? If you are a Christian watching this, like I'm a Christian, I don't believe I'll betray Jesus. But who knows what we're capable of. We need to, that's why we need to pray, we need to read our Bible, we need to seek the Lord, because it is so easy falter. So Peter gets makes this declaration. Jesus says to him in verse 34, Assuredly I say to you that this night before the rooster crows you'll deny me not once not twice three times. He's not saying, oh, yeah, someday you're going to betray me. He said, this very night. Well, Peter had no intention of that. That wasn't his plan. That wasn't on his agenda for the day. Peter said to him, even if I have to die with you, I will not deny you. So said all the disciples. Then Jesus came with them to a place called Gethsemane. And said to the disciples, Sit here while I go and pray over there. He took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, and he began to be sorrowful and deeply distressed. And he said to them, My soul is exceedingly sorrowful, even to death. Stay here and watch with me. I mean... He knew what he was going to have to go through. And the next verse, verse 39, says, And he went a little farther and fell on his face and prayed, saying, Oh, my Father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will. He didn't want to have to, have to go through not just crucifixion and being, but taking on all the sins of the world. He didn't do it to have a fun time. And it is so blasphemous the way that certain so-called Christians will teach that the crucifixion wasn't part of what was needed. Because it was. Jesus went through it because he had to to save our souls. 
Then he came to the disciples and found them sleeping. He said to Peter, What? Could you not watch with me one hour? He loved to criticize them, but it was dark and they were tired. Yes. Yes, they should have been up with him, but would we have? Would I have? Watch and pray, lest you enter into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Again a second time he went away and prayed, saying, O oh my Father, this cup cannot pass away from me unless I drink it. Your will be done. Is that the way we feel when we have to go through something? It's very rarely something as horrible as what Jesus is going to go through. But when we're inconvenienced, if, oh no, I, I'm stuck in a place during quarantine, can't go out. This is too much to bear. Or, uh, oh no, my car has trouble again. How am I going to bear it? This is too much. We need to be willing to go through whatever it is that God has called us to go through. Not my will, but His be done. And he came and found them asleep again, for their eyes were heavy. So he left them. He didn't bother waking up. Went away again, prayed the third time, saying the same words. Then he came to them, to his disciples, and said to them, Are you still sleeping and resting? Behold, the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is being betrayed into the hands of sinners. He knew exactly when they were there. Yes. Rise, let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. And while he was still speaking, behold, Judas, one of the twelve, with a great multitude of swords and clubs, came from the chief priests and elders of the people. So picture this, they're in this garden, around Gethsemane, it's night. All of a sudden, all of these people come. Excuse me. Now his betrayer had given them a sign, saying, Whomever I kiss, he's the one, sees him. And so, immediately, he went up to Jesus and said, Greetings, Rabbi! And kissed him. But Jesus said to him, Friend, why have you come? Then they came and laid hands on Jesus and took him. And suddenly one of those who was with Jesus stretched out his hand and drew his sword struck the servant of the high priest and cut off his ear. In another gospel, we read it was Peter who did this. So he reaches out, cuts off the ear. So where do you think Peter was aiming? Was he the great swordsman to cut off someone's ear? I think he was trying to kill a guy. Jesus said to him, Put your sword in its place. For all who take the sword will perish by the sword. Or do you think that I cannot now pray to my Father, and he will provide me with more than twelve legions of angels? How then could the scriptures be fulfilled, that it must happen thus? Just the way it had to happen. Jesus' crucifixion, his death, is the reason that I can be forgiven. It's the reason that I can go to heaven. It's the reason you can be forgiven, why you can go to heaven. 
Verse 55, at that, in that hour, Jesus said to the multitudes, Have you come out as against a robber with swords and clubs to take me? I sat daily with you, teaching in the temple, and you did not seize me. But all this was done that the scriptures of the prophets might be fulfilled. Then all the disciples forsook him and fled. And those who had laid hold of Jesus led him away to Caiaphas, the high priest, where the scribes and the elders were assembled. The biggest takeaway from this scripture for me is what Jesus was praying, not my will, but yours be done. Is that the way that you really feel? If it's not, then my suggestion is to pray to the Lord that you will feel that way to be able to be that dedicated, fully dedicated to Jesus, fully dedicated to the Lord, that you will that you will accept whatever he has for you, the good and bad, because everything's will work together for good. Not all of it will be good, but it'll work together for good to those who are called. Hope this has been a blessing to you. If it has, please let us know. There's plenty of ways to tell us. Till next time, go with God.